Hi! Welcome to Joy Fido International. I'm going to call you my beautiful warriors. And why warriors? Warriors because every day we wake up, we face challenges. And we have to find a way to overcome those challenges. Now, even the Bible says it. We wrestle not against humans, but principalities and powers. So what I want you to try and remind yourself every day is each time you wake up and you have to take decisions and actions and things to change your life, you are actually at war with the world. So whenever you overcome these things, you become a warrior. And that's why over time I've really thought about what I would call all you beautiful subscribers to our channel what particular name could i call you that will make you really stand out and be great you are a warrior and we're actually overcomers because we deal with all these issues and we come out on the other side of the tunnel so welcome on board um, my name is joy fido so, you know what we represent here at Joy Fido International is all about inspiring you to achieve success. That's what we are here for. And we come here with varied forms of motivational knowledge and information and experiences that help you, you know, rethink what you're going through and how to overcome them. Why do we keep coming back? Because we get amazing responses from you people telling us how amazing we have been, how we've helped you wake up and see things another way and deal with scenarios that you were dealing with. And so that really has inspired us. So while we inspire you, you inspire us. And so when I get all this inspiration and amazing messages from my spirit, I have to come out and share them with you. So today we're gonna to be dealing with something really, really interesting. This is so interesting in the sense that nearly three quarters if not more of the world are in what we know generally as poverty and well the people that are actually rich and extremely rich is just two percent and then of course it starts going slowly down and then you get the ones who are well off people who are middle class people who are you know very very low class so sorry poverty is something that i love to talk about and why am i in a position to talk about it because i've experienced it i've talked about this several times in my videos i come from a family of 16 children plus nearly another six siblings who were out of wedlock in the sense of uh, my dad had two wives and then he had concubines with children and so in my family you just had to survive it wasn't about being treated special and apart from that, I moved over here to England and I started all afresh. I started brand new. I had to stay in little dingy rooms trying to make ends meet. And I had to find a way to deal with my situation. Because obviously being new in a, in a new environment, you don't know anyone. And so you have to start from the very beginning. And then I had my child and I had to be struggling to push her to the minder early in the morning. And then we come back late at night and that was my life. But I had to do something about it. I had to take up courses and trainings. I had to, you know, start different things that I didn't know anything about. Take on, you know, lots of different ways to make ends meet. And in the end, I'm here today chatting with you. So I've been there and I've done that. And that's why poverty is a topic that I really love to talk about. Because I really don't like seeing people struggling and seeing people suffering and i've had this situation as well where in the end i'd recovered and made it all ideally to the point you say yeah you can be relaxed now and then i lost my job and then lost it all over again and then i started all over again so i just feel that something called poverty as we all know it is something we can really do something about we can make changes in our lives that would change the way our life is and because I've been through all those stages I can sit here today and chat with you about poverty and so today's topic is about top 10 and I call them top 10 steps that you can create poverty 
yes creating poverty and so top 10 steps to create poverty it's all about I know somebody might want to say, why are you saying we can create poverty? I was born poor. My life has been poor. Everything around me is poor. So how can I possibly be the one creating the poverty? Yes, we can create poverty. And my experience is one to go by. I was born poor as well, but I've moved my life on. And so just the same way people create wealth, people can also create poverty. And I want to explain some of the things that actually encourage you to remain poor or encourage you to sit down there and feel subdued by the rest of the world while you're blaming everyone else for it. It's actually you that's causing it. The reason I'm really hammering on these things is because I want you to look at them and say, okay, so these are the things I've been doing that's causing me this problem. Okay, I'm going to change it. So I want to really make you see them so you can now look at ways of changing them. So while we are trying to change our situation from being extremely poor or being poor to getting well off or at least middle class, it, everything we do starts from our mind. And our mind becomes the way we think the way we are reacting to scenarios, the way we are responding to it, the way we are making decisions based on things around us. So it's our mindset that needs to be attended to. It's our mindset that needs to be reorganized. And I call it mindset poverty or mindset disability. Because while there's so many disabilities out there that are physical that we can see. Okay, someone is blind, that you can see. Someone is dumb, that you can see. Someone has no, no hands, you can see that. But unfortunately for us, we don't see when somebody's mindset is disabled. Disabled in the sense of, you don't hear people, but that is not normal. Okay, we'll get to normal at as, as some point in this discussion. But suddenly this person doesn't reason the way you would expect them to reason and so it's not just a regular person or a normal person this person has disabled the way they think so it's a mindset disability that's happening and so we're going to now start looking at how we can start enabling the mind to start thinking in a way to help you create wealth Okay, so number one step, number one reason that we all get into this big thing we don't like called poverty is fear. Fear is such an enemy of progress. Fear stops you. Fear doesn't encourage you at all. And why is that such a big thing? Now, lots of us, um, I'm afraid if I do it, it would not come out right. I'm afraid I cannot do it. No, 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 this one is beyond me. I can't deal with it. And so you hear comments like that all the time. But why do we take on fear so much? Now, again, as a Christian, I like to explain to us that fear is not healthy. Fear is not from God. Because the creator of this earth had so much amazing dreams for all of us. He created us with everything in his own image. And so if our God did not create fear, why are we afraid? Why are we so scared of things? Why do we not want to take on challenges? And so it's about time we really look at fear in the face and deal with fear. Uh, there's a book I read one time that was really, really amazing on this. It's called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway, a book by um, Susan Jeffers. I'll try and put some of this thing in the description box so you can actually go out there and buy these books and read them. Every new thing you want to take on in life comes with fear. That is natural. And why is that? Because you're not sure. The unknown. I don't know what's going to happen at the end of this thing that I'm trying to take on. So I'm not sure of it. Should I really take it on? Yes, you should. Because when you give in to fear, what, you, what do you end up doing? You end up failing. Why? Because you end up doing nothing. So fear should not be a reason 
you don't want to move your life forward. So if you're always afraid of things, remember this video, fear is a reason you are not moving your life forward. So number two is something I like to call the spectator syndrome. Spectator syndrome is, is, is like when you go to watch a football match and you are the spectator. So other people are on the field playing and then you stand in the corner and you're watching and you're encouraging them to carry on. Now in life generally, all of us are on the stage. And I keep uh, encouraging you to follow me on my Joy Fido International um, uh, Facebook page where I tend to mention some of these things that help you wake up and think. So we are all on a stage and each thing you do every day in your life, you are on your own stage. So on your own stage, make the best of it. You don't have to wait until you're on this um, amazing Hollywood stage and then you're creating this amazing movie because your life is a movie of you. So spectator syndrome is about, oh, um, good things can only happen to other people, not to me. Um, I'm not good enough for great things to happen. Um, let me go and see how other people are doing it. And so all you do is just keep watching other people do things, but you don't want to do anything. You keep watching. Let me look. Let me look. Let me keep looking. Now, you don't have to keep doing that. You have amazing things that you can do. You are different. That's why you are who you are. And interesting enough, even twins are not the same. I mean, the iris in our eyes are all different. And you've heard of people saying, go and thumb print and put your thumb somewhere. It is so unique. That's how unique our God created us. So for you to keep sitting down there and thinking that only other people have the right to become great, but not you, then you got it all wrong. And that's what's holding you down. Because you need to wake up and understand the fact that you have every right to just be like the next person. And this always makes me laugh when I see the way people are looking at Kim Kardashian all the time. Whatever she does, people are excited. Yes, she's amazing in her own way. But so can you also be. You can also do things that will make people look at you. And so the sooner you start thinking that you also are great in your own right. And that you deserve to be followed. And, you know, you know people spectacularly looking at you as well. Or people encouraging you as well, the better for you. Start thinking. Come out of that spectator syndrome where all you do is just look at other people and you don't want to do anything else. The sooner, the better. Okay, number three is it has to be perfect. This is another crazy, crazy one. Um, most people fall into this trap. Anything you want to do, no, 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 I have to get all the right tools for it. I have to get the right environment for it. I have to um, make sure I have the right clothes for it. I have the right, you know, it, it just goes on and on and on. Why? Because I want to make it perfect before I can do it. This does not lead you anywhere. Perfection on the first, at the first hurdle does not lead you anywhere. Because what you're doing, you're stopping yourself from growth. And I've had lots of students in my class where I've just finished teaching them how to do something. And then you tell them to do it, and the next thing you hear from them is not like the one you did. It's not perfect. I never start my training from, or my students' training from, the first line that you do should be the most perfect one. Otherwise, why are you here? If you have come to learn, then you learn from the stages. There are stages to everything in life. And if you look back on my videos years back, you're going you're gonna to find videos that all you have to do is just laugh. I look at them and I, all I do now is just laugh. But I took the plunge. I had the weirdest of cameras at the time. Pictures that I took of my classrooms were with the most basic cameras. And so I just knew I had a hunger to do something. I had a passion to do something. And I just went with the flow. You hear people who come here to, to take on training and they say to you, the minute I finish, I want to go and start my own salon. But you haven't experienced anything. You haven't even had clients, but you want to take on the expensive project of renting a place and buying the chairs and buying the mirrors and, you know, all 
of these things are things that stop people from progress because you're waiting to get it right first. It has to be right before I take it on. What I say to people like that is you really don't want to learn because you know, imperfection is normal for you to learn. Failing at the first step is normal. You're not meant to be perfect from the first thing. Gradually pick up the skills as you go along. And that's why you hear people say experience is the best teacher. Because you may have gone in for training, you may have been taught the right way to do this thing, and when you actually dip your hand into it, oh my goodness, it's not coming out the way I was taught. Yes, that's fine. Carry on and keep doing it. Because what happens is when you carry on, you learn along the way. So the more you learn, the better you get. And that's what then becomes what they call series of experience. This is what people then come to you to learn because they want to hear how you failed and then recovered and failed and recovered. And you heard my story how I started from zero and moved it on and then failed and I moved it on and then failed. It's normal for us to go through these hurdles of life. So whenever you're starting anything that your heart is really deep into, don't say to yourself, it has to be perfect before I do it. Just get on with it. And you know that um, uh, slogan from Nike, just do it. The same thing with feel the fear and do it. Just get up and do it, don't wait for perfection. Because as you're going along, things will change. You will improve on it, you will learn new things. So, again, one way to start looking at things again, making sure you're not stopping yourself by claiming it has to be far perfect first. Number four, um, I don't need help. That's it. Uh, you get to people, you look at them, they seriously know they need support, they need help, they need to make what they're doing work right. They say to you, I don't need help. I don't need training. And I hear this all the time. People come here and they say to me, um, I'm extremely good at this. I just, I just want to just, what is the point just, just, just? This is something I like to teach anyone who knows me, my children, my family, everyone. You know one way of doing something. You are extremely interested in that thing. You know, we've talked about picking up your passion and picking up those natural talents that God gave you. So you know you're good at something. But you want to be the best at that thing. Years ago, I knew I could do hair. I started with doing hair from the age of five. But I knew I wanted to move it to the next level. I knew I wanted to be able to share with people. And so what did I do? I took on series of trainings. I bought series of DVDs. But you still get people who say to you, I don't, I don't want all of that. I just want to, I just want to only know how to do the one thing. Now, what makes you think that what you know is perfect? What makes you think that what you know is the best way of doing it? Especially when people say to me, I want to go and offer the service of hair. I say, but someone's going to pay you for your service. Yes? Yes. Why do you not want to give this person the best there is in that skill? The only way you can get good at whatever you do is to take on training. And when you look at footballers, I love talking about footballers because my young son is into football. They started teaching them from the age of four sometimes, even the age of five. And then they're gradually training them and training them. Footballers have coaches. Athletes have coaches. Great business people have coaches. And so everyone needs a coach. And sometimes they call us mentors or call people who are teaching mentors. You need someone who's been there, done that, made the mistakes like I talked about mistakes, showing you how they survived through the whole process. Now, if you want to just drag your foot, then take your time and do it your own way. But if you don't want to go through all this series of hurdles and you want to get this thing get it right and in the right way as well, then what is wrong with taking on training? It's very important that whatever you have decided, this is what I want to do. I love doing this. Go and gain training. Someone will teach you how to do it. Because that lack of training is definitely the surest way to lose that thing. 
is definitely the surest way to end up being poor. So remember we here, this is our package to you. This is our answer to your issues. This contains over 30 DVDs and it answers everything there is. Remember, I've done series of trainings and I've bought every DVD I could reach out there and I con concentrated everything into this training to make sure you're having the absolute best so you don't have to take on trips, you don't have to spend all that money trans um, transporting yourself or you know, flying to get here. All of that helps you to sit at home and get your own training properly without sending you a certificate confirming you've done it. As always, all the details of this will be in the description box. So I think number five is lack of belief and acceptance. Now, this is very important to all of us. We talked about you being unique and individual. That is very true. Lots of us struggle to accept who we are. I know there's so much out there that people have issues with. Lacking confidence, lacking belief, lacking... Uh, um, somebody said to me the other day, I can't remember the exact words, um, insecurity. And I feel so insecure about myself. And this is where this issue is. It's about you accepting who you are. I don't know what is so bad about you that you are, you are refusing to accept. Because lack of belief is about you just refusing to accept something about yourself. And these are the examples I like to give. Someone like Danny DeVito, he was extremely short. But he is one of the greatest, you know, um, uh, uh, movie uh, actors you could think of. Right now we have Kevin Hart. Everyone goes crazy laughing. Oh, he's so short, he's so short. But this man has not stopped agreeing that he's short. He says, yes, I'm short. So what? That doesn't stop me from having the best smiles in the world, from being the best clapper in the world. You know, so you find something that works for you, not what doesn't work for you. Because lots of people just concentrate and focus on the part of them that doesn't work. I am short. Yes, for a woman, I don't care. But I wear extremely high heel shoes when I have to. My confidence is on top of the world. And there are people who have issues with they don't have hair. That should not be an issue. Go out there. There are lots of wigs out there that could give you whatever image you want. You can get what you want to create that thing that you are lacking. What about the face? Oh, my face is so messed up. There's spots everywhere. There's all kinds of makeup out there now. Cover it if that's the problem. So whatever it is that's making you feel uncomfortable, if it's something you can change, do what you can about it. I'm short and I can change it. I, I wear high heel shoes. Oh, I don't have time to play with my hair as much as I would love to. I get my beautiful wigs and I wear them. Oh, my face is not the best in the world. I'll take my makeup and take my time and put them on. And so there's so much solutions out there. If you're having issues with food, I mean with your body, do something about it. Cut out on the unhealthy foods and start eating healthy. This is one area that I'm extremely, extremely passionate about. And you're going to be seeing amazing things from me guiding you on how to take care of your health. So it's about you making those decisions and taking those actions to change things that are not, that are things you can change. And of course, accept the ones that you cannot change. So lack of belief is definitely from those issues. And if you can face them head on, then there's nothing stopping you from going out there and achieving what you were actually brought on this earth to achieve. So push them all away. Whatever it is that's been on your head, you know, in your mind, holding you back and making you not want to blend in or go out there and do your thing. You know, you, you are a star. Go out there and shine. And that's what I say to everyone. Why can you not stand on your stage and shine and be you? Because you align other people around you, make you feel uncomfortable with yourself. Accept the past that you love. Do what you can about the ones you can, you can change. And just take on your life the way it is. You did not create yourself. And so if you find yourself in whatever image you have found yourself, make the best of it. While we're still talking about lack of belief, um, you get lots of people going on about, I'm not good enough at whatever I do. And I hear that a lot. I hear that a lot to the point that 
this even in my family i see lots of my family members struggling with things that i can see clearly that they're extremely good at it my little girl she is so good at makeup she is so good at beauty treatments because of course she went for training with beauty and she still struggles to accept that she's good so then i have to get her lots of my friends and i say come on come and see with my daughter let her do your makeup let her and now she's getting there because it was all about her thinking that she's not good enough and that's because she's thinking that people are going to i also have a friend who also did an interesting course and this lady spent so much money taking on this training and suddenly she doesn't want to practice it why Be because she doesn't believe that she's good enough yes there will always be people out there who will criticize you no matter what you do i get criticized all the time you know even on youtube you should see some of my my videos where everyone is just going crazy fighting each other because i did something or because i said something and so everyone's taking up this cause to fight me and then you get the ones who are they, you know taking my side of the story and the others who are attacking me that has not stopped me from doing what i love doing so you are going to get people criticizing you even as a christian jesus christ our savior he was criticized when he was on this earth people didn't accept him it did not stop jesus from doing what he came to do so whenever you are feeling down about yourself and you're thinking oh people are not going to accept me people think i'm not good enough just remind yourself that you are good if it's deep down inside you. Take it on. This beautiful jewelry I'm wearing, my sister makes them. And she still struggles to ac accept that she, she's good at something. My, my other daughter, she's amazing with athletics. Whenever she goes running, she comes out tops. I say to her, please, let's go get some more training. Oh, mom, I'm not so sure I'm good enough. And then, of course, my amazing husband, he is great at cooking. But you tell him you, you, your foods are so amazing, we love the way it tastes, he gets angry. Why are you telling me I can cook? So, I don't understand why anyone would sit there and disbelieve themselves, even when people are telling them they are great at something. You have to accept that fact that you are good at something. For people to even tell you that you're good at it, all you have to do is embrace it, accept it, and perfect it the way you think will make you believe that you are good enough. And then you see yourself move on and create great things for yourself. Uh, number six, I'm thinking, or oh, if I've lost it with the numbers, don't worry about it. We will, we will line them out in the description box. So number six is reasons, excuses, indiscipline excuses quite amazing quite amazing this this particular one everyone who knows how to do something suddenly hides on the reasons or hides on the excuses i would have been great if, if i was taller i would have been perfect if i was prettier it would have been amazing if i was slimmer and so you hear all these excuses if I was white and wasn't black, I would, have, I would have stood out. And so I get tired hearing excuses. And we just talked about people not believing in themselves. It's the same thing coming down here. Excuses, reasons, if only this had happened, if only that could happen. Um, I would have been rich if I, if, if I had money to take on training. Um, I, I would have made it to the top if, if the interest this was another very interesting one my young man my my little son and um i was saying to him son you need to read your books and all of that uh you see all those people in your class see the amazing grades they get mom it's only the indians who who do well in exams and that made me laugh he's quite young so he can dream and think the way he likes so you have to guide him but hello the, the, the thing with the human brain is we all get the same brain from when we're born. The same brain. Everybody's given the same brain. Now, the way you use yours is what makes you stand out. So the sooner you start using that brain that was given to you, um, there's a video we did the other day and I was explaining how the human only uses about 10% of our brain. 
the sooner we can start going further than that 10 percent the better for all of us because the unique thing between those of us um who are poor and those of them who are rich is we don't think as much as these people think we need to wake up and think and use every opportunity around us to make things happen for us let's wake up and stop the reasons and the excuses I would have been this on if only that had happened. You, you get my, my, my children say things like, my friends in school, their, their parents are so rich. And that's why things are so easy for them. But that's not the point. I came from nothing and the, here I am today. I know that I'm not poor, poor. So yes, I'm growing. Yes, you know, you never get to the end of life until it's actually over. You never know when things may turn the way you're expecting it to be. But you have to keep carrying on. And you, you don't want to remain at the bottom. That's where nobody should be. Nobody should be at the bottom where the only way I can eat is if someone gives me money. No, you have to get up and make that money for yourself. And that's what I do every day. This is what I wish for everyone out there. This is why we created this home training program. So that nobody is sitting down there and saying the only reason their life is so bad is because no one's giving them money. I mean, where I come from in Nigeria, the government does not give anyone money. You make your money. And that's the kind of mentality I have. I wake up to do things because I know I've got two hands. So no reason for you to hide under excuses and refuse to discipline yourself. This is why the indiscipline comes in. Discipline is so important for you to create wealth. It is so, so important because you need to put yourself in places where you need to be, no matter how much pain, how much pain you have to go through. I tell my, my son, the, you know, Ronaldo, this great footballer. Ronaldo, he would sit up all night learning to play his football. He would wake up first thing in the morning learning to, to play some more tricks. And now he gets on the field and he becomes the best. And people look at him and they say how lucky he is. And you get all these people hating him. He is so arrogant. But this young man worked so hard for where he is today. That was down to discipline. You don't sit there and expect things to just happen to you because you are you. We all have the same opportunity on this earth. And we have to make the best use of them. So number seven, I'm thinking, is no time or right time so you you hear people giving you we've talked about excuses but time is a big big factor in our life time is that part of us that no human has been able to control none of us can control time and i was reading something about steve jobs the other day and he, he was in hospital and he said the hospital bed is the, is, is the one place that, um, something about is the richest bed in the world uh, because no matter how much money you have, you cannot say because you're ill, somebody else should come and lie on the bed for you. That's one thing you cannot transfer, your illness. And so for him, he was so angry with how much time he wasted in his time. Now that he had great things coming his way, the time was up. So this is the same with all of us. From the day we are born, the time, the clock starts ticking. None of us know, but God has specified, allocated specific time for all of us on this earth. And so the minute your time starts ticking, you have to do what you can within the time you've been given before it gets to the end of the line. So why then do we sit here all the time and look for a reason why it's not the right time? Unfortunately, right or wrong, time is ticking. So you need to get up, get on with whatever you're dreaming of doing, and get on and do it. This is why whenever I get these inspirations and all these amazing words coming to me to share with you, I don't hold back. Because I could say, let me create the right time. I mean, getting this video done right now, I'm under pressure to get it done because I've got so much I have to go out there to do. But I'm sitting here getting on with it. Because I know this message is important for you listening. Whenever you know you have to do something, don't sit there and wait until you create the right time, the right atmosphere, the right condition, the right, the right, the right.
time is not on your side. So you have something to do, get up and do it. Worry. So um, that's another reason we get down down there. Why is worry such a big thing? <coughs> Lots of us worry too much about what other people think of us. So before you wake up in the morning, you want to dress up in any outfit. Like I, I wake up now and I just put on this hair and you know, most times you see me with different hairs. I don't worry about what other people are thinking. I just go on with it. You want to dress up, you're thinking, what would people think of this dress? Is it too long? Is it too short? Is it too... You worry so much. What if I was going to do a video on something? No, if I do that video, oh my goodness, can I imagine the comments that I'm going to get? Um, if I went out there to especially in business with marketing and I say to my students go out there and give your flyers to your potential clients and they're scared of doing it I'm so worried they would take that paper off me and they're going to throw it on the road and they just put it in the bin but you go out there and you do it anyway just go out and give out the paper you don't know who's going to actually keep it and put it in their pocket and call you when they need your service so worry is such an unnecessary thing that stops us from growing because we're so conscious about what people think about us they're going to be negative about us they're going to be very critical about us they're going to start picking holes in whatever we said and whatever we do unfortunately my kind of personality from when i was really young my dad said to me there's no one out there who's better than you or greater than you apart from your god who created you and that has remained in my head till this day we always be part of me. I can go anywhere and get on with my life because you did not create me. So when you're sitting down there and beginning to be negative and picking up holes in what I do, well, unfortunately, that is your problem because it's not mine. So stop the worrying and just get on with your life and do what you know is right for you to do. So number nine is fake image or what I like to call foolish pride. This is so, so important to um, what is helping us grow. I find lots of people, and this is very important. This is like my story as well. I find lots of people, they, they have amazing talents at doing something. They are great at doing something. But no, they don't want to do it because they're thinking that um, people are going to be saying they're not good enough for it. Or apart from not good enough, people are going to be thinking, why is she doing that? Isn't she better than that? And I'll give you an example. When I started working with braids and, you know, natural hair, I'll tell you years back, it was something starting in this line. I've talked about it in other videos. And so you allow what people are saying, we just talked about worry, but you allow what people are saying affects the way you would have done your thing. I knew I wanted to work with hair. I knew I wanted to create a difference in hair. I wanted to help people with the caring for their natural hair. I wanted to create amazing designs and allow people that I work with to be proud of what they were wearing. And I had people telling me, why are you doing that? Is that not beneath you? That's foolish pride because if I had listened to these people telling me things, I would be sitting down there waiting for government to give me money. Like here in the UK, we get what they call benefits. And so you sit down and you do nothing with your hands. You know you can do things. No, you don't want to do it because people are going to laugh at you. That's where the pride comes in. People will laugh and say, why am I braiding hair? I hear that so much. I hear people who are already trained in my service, uh, in my skill, the kind of skill I share with my friends and my, my students. And then you hear some of them say, but my mom thinks it's very stupid of me to be doing hair. My sister thinks it's ridiculous. And I had lots of students who were struggling with that. And I said to them, you know you have to get on with your life. These people are not coming to your house to feed you. They're not giving you money to feed you. They're not interested in how you cope with your life. But they want to tell you, they want to dictate to you what you should do. And this is so huge for us in Africa, in Nigeria in particular. You see people with, with so much skill, they could have moved on to do amazing things. They're so upset with trying to, to even, you know, start out. Because uh, the expectation is you should be working in a bank. Those are the ones that really excite people where I come from. Do, does she work in a bank? Oh, no, she doesn't. 
Does she work with the government? No. Does she work with the oil companies? No. Oh, then she's nobody. And so nobody wants to appreciate the fact that people have amazing talents and people have skills. Now that's one of the greatest things I've learned from the West, living in England. Every skill you have counts. And I've done a video on that. Every skill matters. Whatever you are good at, go and make it special. Stop the foolish pride. Stop the, you know, image. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm actually this person, I'm not that person. If you are good, good at something and you make that thing spectacular, you make that thing stand out, people are going to look up to you for that. And so you get people who sit down, wear amazing makeup, wear the most beautiful clothes, and they don't have any job. They don't do anything. They, are not, they don't have a skill. They don't have a job. They are just sitting down there waiting for someone to, to give them money. The sooner you wake up, and realize, I, I know the economic downturn really did make people wake up. Wake up and use the two hands God gave you and do something with it. And create your own wealth. And stop this nonsense about, I have to meet standards because everybody around me work in the bank, so I have to work in the bank too. No, wake up. Laziness happens to do to be number 10 on our list. And to me, laziness is the mother of poverty. That's the best way I can put it. You see someone who you've told to do something, again, we talked about time, they just sit back and think, oh, I do it when I like. And so you just refuse to motivate yourself. You refuse to get up. Now, there, there's a book from, um, I've forgotten, this man's name is Seven Habits of Successful People. That's the title of the book. And laziness does not even go anywhere near there because you have to wake up 5 a.m. and if you have to go to bed at 3 a.m., so be it. But you must tell yourself the things you're doing within that time. So wake up, get on with it, discipline yourself. The other thing that goes underneath this laziness as well, which I really struggle to deal with from people is unhealthy habits. And so you see someone who, instead of sitting down and focusing on things they could do with their life, they are going on drugs. What does drugs do for you? Oh yeah, it's, it speeds up your way of thinking and then you become empty in the end. Or you're going on tobacco smoking and you create ridiculous habits that you can't stop. And then you become an alcoholic. And so before you know it, you, you can't do anything without taking alcohol. You put all that into your body and suddenly you're so lazy you can't wake up to get anything done. And then the next thing, you blame the whole world for everybody else around you getting on with life and being rich and then you are so poor. You need to wake up. You need to wake up, wake up, wake up. And even as we were underneath this laziness, you're going to also hear people who find the usual excuse, like we talked about excuse, I have four children and that's why I cannot do anything. I have children. And they, it was actually my children that motivated me and inspired me to get up and get on with things. Because imagine what it's going to look like when they've grown up and they see their mother so poor and then they cannot make ends meet. So I always say to people, in spite of, that's the right word you should use, in spite of my circumstance, I have made things work for me. Not because of my circumstance, I can't make anything work for me. The sooner you wake up from being lazy and looking for excuses and finding fault in everything around you and hiding on, on, on that false image, the better for you. So I'm going to leave it here today because, again, I've got quite a lot of things I'm working on. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. Follow me on Facebook on my page, Joy Fido International. This is where I really talk about most of these things. And on Instagram, I'm there, Joy Fido. And thank you so much for watching. I will look forward to seeing you in the next video.